here we've got 24 loops of wire. Each loop has an area of 225 centimeters squared. So I've tried to draw kind of a, a 3D image here of a loop immersed in a magnetic field. So you can imagine on the left, we've got some sort of external bar magnet. Maybe that's the North Pole and on the right, that's the South Pole. So in this example, the way I've drawn it, my field lines always go from North to South, straight across from left to right. So when the initial uh, plane of that loop is parallel to these field lines, it's not capturing any field lines. And if it's not capturing any field lines, the flux is zero. Now, I appreciate that sometimes these drawings are hard to visualize. So imagine I looked at it exactly head on instead of this kind of 3D sketch. It would look like this. I've got a North Pole and I've got a South Pole. I've got my field lines moving like this to the right. And my loop, I'm looking at it right along this end of it. So this end is completely flat like this. And then it's into the page. The loop is into the page. And there's many, many coils, right? So this, this picture is only showing one loop. You can imagine there's 24 of these loops. If the loop is flat, then none of the field lines pass through the center of that loop. Therefore, it's not creating any flux. So my initial flux which is B times A, and we have to be capturing field lines. Since I'm not capturing any field lines, my initial flux is zero Weber's. Now we rotate it so that it's capturing maximum flux. So we rotate it so that it's now has its plane perpendicular to the field lines, like it shows in part B here. So this is where I started in A and I rotate it to part B. Now I'm capturing all those field lines. So in part B, my diagram simply looks like this. So if I take my eraser, now the loop has switched into this position where it's capturing all the field lines. So to capture my final my magnetic flux, I take my magnetic field, 3.6 times 10 to the negative two teslas, and I multiply it by the entire area that, of that loop since it's in its maximum position. So 3.6 times 10 to the negative two teslas, <coughs> Now my area is 225 centimeters squared. And I don't like centimeters, so I have to get rid of them. So put the centimeters on the bottom. I want meters out of that. That's the standard unit in physics. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. That only is gonna cancel one of these centimeters off, so I have to square everything. So 225 centimeters squared is not 2.25 meters squared you have to divide it by 100 squared. So when you do all that, you get your final flux to be equal to 8.1 times 10 to the negative four Weber's. So now when I go and calculate my induced EMF, my average induced EMF, the formula is negative N times change in flux divided by how long it takes me. Remember, it's inversely related to time. If I do it faster, take less time, I get a bigger EMF. So negative 24 turns times flux final minus flux initial, all divided by the time it takes, which is 0 0.15 seconds, gives me an induced EMF of negative 0.13 volts.